Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the ExoCAD test and die offset check model um, and how to finish it and then use that model to determine which setting is best uh, when setting up orders and, and uh, building models in ExoCAD. So here we have some tools and we have the block. So this block should be uh, printed and post-processed, so washed and cured uh, like normal per the instructions and I'll be linking the instructions in the bottom of this video as well uh, if you need to refer back to it or if you don't have it handy. Uh, so you, you should have the socket or, or the, the model and then the die uh, to fit to it. And after washing and curing it should look something like this. The, the um, dies on supports and some of the tools that I'll be using in this video and these are also uh, linked and shown in the applications guide are I have my awl um, and my knife straight blade sharp knife and then uh, the snips or the, um, the cutters that come with the finishing kit uh, and then lastly this is my spray dry lubricant called super lube uh, which will help um, make the seeding of the dye much smoother and, and uh, much more repeatable and make it easy to get out and in. All right, with that said, first thing we need to do is get the dye prepared. Um, and so to do that, really, uh, all you need to do is remove these supports and then cut the support um, points that are left over uh, uh, with our with our knife here so you can try to just rip it off and that generally will work but another technique and why I have these snips here is you can also just cut the base of the raft and generally this will give you better access to uh, removing those supports so as you can see here the supports are, are working their way off as I cut this and just one thing to note is that they do sort of fly everywhere as you cut them off uh, and I'm just going to get rid of this last bit here. And now we have access to the support structure itself. I take my flat knife and I'm just going uh, flat to the bottom of the die, slowly working. You don't want to do it all at once, uh, these supports off. Um, generally, when you set up these cases on uh, normal cases, uh, like uh, a, a model or something that you're doing, uh, this is even easier. Uh, so. You want to make this the bottom of the die as flat as flat or flush as possible. So, and there'll be a couple uh, test fits here. I'll, I'll be showing, but let's start out by just trimming this the bottom of the die uh, with the, my straight blade as flat as possible. So, hopefully, you can see this pretty well. And one other thing to note is you want to make sure the edges of the bottom of this die. Uh, are free from supports. Over relieving the edges is okay. Uh, it doesn't make a huge difference on seating. It's really the the outer edge of the flat part of the die that really is is used for seating. So I'll just go around here quick, make sure I don't have any uh, sharp spots or anything like that that's going to impinge the die fit. So you want to use compressed air. Make sure you get all the debris off of the die. And also it's important to note that you want to make sure you don't have any debris inside the socket holes. And we'll be using the bottom of the sockets to make sure the, the die is properly seated and flush to the bottom of the socket. So you want to make sure you get rid of the flashing on the inside of the, of the socket here. So you can do this two ways. One that works really well is you can see there that it's pretty clear what's flashing and what's actually not. But you can poke around the edges to with my awl to get rid of this flashing or you can use a dental hand piece of course or you can use a knife and you just trim around the edge of the socket pretty easy pretty quick again the key here is you want it to be clear and make sure there's no debris inside the hole so that looks pretty good now uh, before we actually do the fitment testing, there's one thing that I want to note. On the loosest side, which is this side, uh, there's two raised areas. Uh, the trimming of the die is really, really important for correct vertical height and seatment. Uh, 
And these vertical shelves here on the loosest should be absolutely uh, perpendicular to the edge of the margin of the die. So this is actually a great test and practice for doing this on real cases for how much you need to relieve. But if you seat this die in, uh, actually I should be using the, the spray lubricant first before seating so it doesn't get too roughed up and it keeps it a bit more consistent. So, and again, make sure you get all your flashing off there. So I'll take my dry lubricant and again, make sure this is shake, you shake it up really well. You wanna spray this on the shaft of the die. This is a food grade uh, dry lubricant. So there's really no residue or anything left over that you have to worry about too much, but you just spin it and spray it very, very lightly around the base of the die, or try not to drop it like I did, but it dries completely clear very, very quickly. You can use some compressed air to make this process a little bit quicker, but it is air drying rapidly as we speak. And now it's got a thin, invisible coat of Teflon, actually. It's the brand name for it. It's PTFE. So now that the dry lubricant is on, this will seat very, very nicely and easily. And you can kind of see it in the, the, the film here or the video. Uh, you want to see the top of this notch here be completely even with the margin. And so if you notice, I'm just a hair high. So what that means, and if you're completely seated, and the way you make sure it's seated is you view from the bottom of the socket, we look totally flush and seated around the entire part. Um, we need to do a little bit more relieving on the bottom of that die. And so using my awl, it's a really nice tool for poking the dies uh, out very, very easily. Or you can use your finger, of course. Uh, that indicated to me that I need to relieve just a little bit more material. And the key here is you don't want to do too much all at once. And if you want to be absolutely certain how much material you're actually using, one recommendation is actually print this die and this job twice, and you can have a comparison, uh, like a before and an after. But this is really, really good practice, especially if somebody that's, uh, say, starting at your lab or practice that you want uh, to do this job. Uh, have them do this test, even if you know your setting, because this will give them a really good idea on what to do with real cases. So just a hair of a, a trim here. Try to make it as flush as possible. That's why I'm using a straight blade here. Of course, a Bard Parker would work. If you prefer a dental handpiece, you know, whatever you want to do here. But I, I like this flat blade. Uh, I have it linked in the guide. Make sure all your debris is off. Okay, so I just uh, blew off some of the debris and I also applied one more coating of uh, Super Lube. And now I'm gonna fit it on the loosest uh, socket here, which is 20. And this goes down really nice. And you can see, hopefully on camera, uh, the alignment of this notch to the margin looks really, really good. Um, I'll include a, a photo of it in the guide. But now that we have the seating happening correctly, and you can check the bottom of the die. It is seating um, correctly around all sides of it. Um, that we want to go from the loosest, which is 20, uh, to the tightest until we can't uh, fit it anymore. Uh, or it fits, but it's so tight that it's, it's really hard to remove. So that is too loose, and you can tell by, it just, like you can wiggle it. I don't know if you can see this really but it moves in this socket just ever so slightly. So this is not our setting, uh, but let's move it up to one more tighter, 10 microns tighter. And this is actually really feeling pretty good. Oh, it snaps right into place. That's really pretty nice there at 10. And it doesn't really move. I don't know if you can see it. And it moves a little bit. So I would probably wanna go one notch higher than this, uh, maybe two. But let's see, so let's get this out. I felt pretty good there. But let's get this into this next socket, which is zero, sort of the mid-range on tightness. And that snapped down pretty well. It is not rotating and it is not really, it's moving just, just a hair. 
and let's see how hard it is to get out. Pretty, really not hard to get out at all. So let's see if I can get into the negative 10 micron offset here and that's snapped in. That is, that is not going anywhere either. There's no rotation, no movement. This is, uh, it feels to me like this is the setting that I want to go with. And it's still, you can get it out. Um, it's not a problem to remove. Uh, maybe just for fun, try to get it in the tightest. And, you know, every time you insert a die, it does lose a little bit of the spray dry lubricant. But um, I could probably force that in if I really wanted to. But I don't think I'd ever be able to get it out. So this is it for me. I think this is a, a clear... Um, choice here that this is really rock solid in there. It's not moving around at all. Um, for me and this printer and my personal preference, negative 10 is where I want to be. So again, we work from loosest to tightest to where you are comfortable and the die is not moving. And again, this is negative 10. So refer to the guide, but now when you set up and uh, create your model in ExoCAD, this is the Form 3B setting that you want to use. And we know we have the, uh, the alignment of the die into the socket, and generally that is the best practice uh, moving forward for these models. Uh, so that does it. That's how you get to um, determining the proper offsets for ExoCAD. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. There'll be even more visual and other information in the written guide for this workflow and the links to the file so you can print it and everything else uh, Thanks so much and have a great day.